so it all began while I was in London. I called my roommate and she told me that she owed me an apology but wouldn't tell me why. When I got home I understood. I had tried cocaine for the first time on spring break and she bitched me out for doing it. I said I'd never snort anything. I'd done all the basics except coke, crack, and heroin. That was the only time I did it. Fast forward, my friend was talking about an apology because she had done it. Right before I left to go to Europe, we met a bunch of new guys. Little did I know we would have so much in common and they would introduce new worlds to us. My friend, let's call her Beth, didn't just snort it, she shot it up or rigged it as we call it. When I got back, I also rigged cocaine for the first time. Don't let anyone tell you different, that is the way to do cocaine. It is the most intense feeling one could ever have. I never got the wah wahs the first 10 or 12 times I shot up. But the first time I did, just imagine the feeling. It hits your vein. There's about three seconds of waiting and then everything around starts to sound metallic. If water is running that's the most metallic sound. Everything sounds like Luke Skywalker is right beside you twirling his lightsaber. Wanting to get the wah-wahs made my boyfriend and I almost break up. I lied to everyone. I was broke, lying to dealers, and I lost four jobs while I was behaving this way. There were five of us at the beginning of the railroad to hell and we introduced it to about 15 other people. Let me tell you what happened. One of them went to rehab and my roommate and best friend, Beth had to move back home to her parents' house to get away. Then there's the reason I stopped rigging, my friend that almost died. After being up on crystal meth all night, my B friend and I came home. Ten minutes after we got there my neighbor came running screaming on my door that some guy a couple of doors down was screaming that he had a blood clot and was about to die. This is one of the original five people and also my neighbor. I ran down there and had to hold a clot on my freed's left side of his chest while he seemed that he was about to die and I had to save his life. I took one look at his arms and I had to run to the bathroom and throw up. He had track marks all the way up his arms. I couldn't handle that. 911 had already been called but weren't there. I tried and tried to hold that knot but it kept moving and we were both frantic. I mean, I couldn't sit there and I couldn't really help him. I don't know if you can imagine but try to. My very good friend was about to die and I couldn't really do anything for him. And worst of all it could have been me. That's the day I stopped shooting up. Oh I failed to mention, my friend had already had two seizures and hadn't learned his lesson. Oh, and after this incident, he still shoots up to this day. Stupid bastard. I can't be his friend anymore because if he doesn't give a fuck about his life. I care whether I live or die, he doesn't. You see, all you people who think you're addicted to snorting coke, try shooting it. You find a whole new world of addiction. I will and didn't do it again if my life depended on it. You can take what you want from this article. I left out all the basic, normal cokehead stuff. Getting more at noon the next day, going on two-day binges, having to get drunk to sleep, that's basic. I still snort occasionally but not much. I realized how fucked up I was. I'd come home every morning after be out all night and cry to my boyfriend and tell him it was the last time. I'd stay out all night with my dealer. What must have gone on in my boyfriend's head I don't even want to know.